Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now, I could watch this thing whiz around all day. <laughs> I love this little doofer. Anyway, recently Warlord Games paired with Army Painter to release a bunch of what they call Rapid Deployment Kits. They are six paints with a quick shade dip of the relevant tone. It's almost always going to be strong tone because, hey, World War II was brown. We know that. Now, the quick shade I really like. I use it on a lot of my miniatures. But it does have a two-day trying time, uh, and if your hobby time doesn't really line up with that period, then you might end up waiting, you know, days more than you have to to get onto the next step of your miniatures. And on top of that, it's also not an acrylic. It's a, an enamel-based product, so it needs turpentine or white spirits or something like that to clean and thin. And, you know, if you're looking for something that's easier to use, then here's a method you might find helpful gets a very similar sort of effect to the strong tone, but without having to use this stuff. Now I've used just, what is it, 13 paints? I would say 15 paints if we include the bases. Okay, so this is not going to push the boat out as far as a budget goes either. And the results, I think, are pretty cool. So let's get into it, have a look at what we're going to do. There are going to be notes on the paints in the description below, along with some variants that you might want to use if you are doing different periods of the war. Now to start with, I've actually got two miniatures here that I've worked on. I started from a base coat of Skeleton Bone Primer from Army Painter, and then I've just given them flat colors, and I've used those colors that I'm going to list in the description. So this is all very simple painting so far. I've kind of glossed over most of that, no pun intended. Over here as well, I've got the other fella. This dude is one of the metal uh, black tree designs troopers. And this fella is one of the Warlord plastics. Uh, I'm using them because they demonstrate sort of different uh, uniform periods. Generally speaking, the later you go, the more green you get. So you can see the different uh, webbing color there. And again, I'll list the variations in the paint list below. Now what I'm going to do first of all, now that I've got them up to this stage, this took me about 40 minutes to get these, these two guys painted like this. I'm going to go ahead and hit them with a satin varnish. You can use a gloss, you can use either a brush on or a spray, but I'm going to use Munitorum varnish because I like this stuff. All I'm going to do is cover the whole thing, uh, both of them, and let's varnish them from this stage. So now we've got that varnish on. It's a little bit shiny, but not to worry. We're going to fix that up later. Now, any of you who've worked with metal miniatures before might have come across this where obviously you want to put a varnish on your miniatures because metal tends to chip a little more easier than plastic. But what we're using this for is something a little bit cooler than that. I'm going to use it to basically make washes work a little more effectively by running completely off the flatter areas and only collecting in the recesses. It's going to save us some time versus having to highlight later on. So what I have got here, I've got two different shades. I've got Strong Tone from Army Painter, and I'm going to put that on this fella here. So exactly the same as you would, you know, ordinarily just bang this over the whole miniature. And then on the other fella, we're going to use Agrax Earthshade. Now in part I'm doing this because I want to just demonstrate two separate brands and, you know, how they work using this method. And in part because I still see people saying... Strong Tone and Agrax Earthshade are the same color, which is not entirely accurate. Agrax Earthshade has a slightly warmer finish to it, I find. Uh, but whatever the case, you know, you'll get to see that in a couple of moments. We'll go ahead, finish putting the Agrax Earthshade on this guy, and then leave them both to dry for about 30 minutes, half an hour. Now, once our guys have had plenty of time to dry, this is what we've got. And I don't know about you, but... <laughs> I'd put that on the table, uh, particularly in the case of the Agrax Earthshade. Because of the way this one dries, you'll find it takes most of the shine off the flatter areas. You might want to go back and hit it with a matte varnish of your choice, but for gaming figures and just for getting something on the table, I don't think that looks too bad. With the strong tone, you'll see... Ooh, crikey. You'll see... <clears throat> you know what? I'm not going to edit that out. You'll see that it has dried uh, much darker. I got a little bit of pooling on the sleeve there, but that's not much of a problem. What you will find with the strong tone is that you can highlight using the base color a little more effectively. But I still think that looks pretty cool. In particular, this guy uh, being metal, 
I think a second coat of varnish is not going to be a bad idea at all, and we'll take the last of that shine off. But looking at these two guys, I reckon let's just pop a base on them both and see what they look like, you know, in context, ready to put on the table. Now with their bases applied, that's what we've got. And to be perfectly honest, I'm quite pleased with how they turned out. I'd put them on the table no problem. If you've got the time to do some decals, little shoulder patches or what have you, these guys all look fantastic. And it's taken me very little effort, okay? The trick of the whole varnish and then you know, shade, I was going to say dip for a second, but that's what we want to avoid. <laughs> uh, it works perfectly well, metal or plastic. But if there is one thing I would say you want to do to just bump these guys up a little bit more, and it won't take you very long at all, it is to touch up their skin. So let's have a quick look at that. Now this is still Vallejo, this is basic skin tone. You want to be quite sparing with this because it is fairly light. Just get a little diddly brush, just bap in the back of his knuckles. On his thumb there, and a little on his nose, beep, chin, beep, and just in his cheekbones there. Not very much at all, and it's quite stark from this sort of distance, but put him on the table, he'll look to business. So there we have it guys, start to finish, these fellas take about 30 minutes apiece. If you batch paint them in groups of five, you're probably going to cut that down. You can get them all done to this kind of standard, maybe an hour and a half, two hours. All right. Painting them in groups is always going to be faster than individuals. And, you know, I would put him in the table. I'm pretty pleased with that result, to be perfectly honest. Now, is he perfect? No, there's tons you could do. You know, <laughs> you could highlight the jacket, the trousers, any number of things. But for those who have limited hobby time, and I'm thinking specifically of parents and students who've mentioned to me before that they like the, the the speed painting videos for like Warhammer 40,000 and Age of Sigma. You know, there are historical gamers out there too who also lack for time. So this one goes out to you guys. Hopefully you can find something here that will apply to whatever your army you're doing. Now in particular, on that note, I want to give a quick shout out to the Farnsworth Painting Guides. You can find those over on the Artisan Designs website. I will link to that in the description. And if you ever need to double check what colors you're using for a particular army, uh, those colors will work perfectly well with this method. So go check those out too, guys. So hopefully something there was useful to you. As always, feel free to drop a comment in the old box below. My Twitter and Facebook are both linked there too. So thank you very much for your time, guys, and enjoy the rest of your day.